time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord, and sweet is the way He gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Anita French Kidd, and I am from Branson, Missouri, and I am so happy to be here today. I'm going to start out with a song that my father and I wrote. It's about the shuffling of the dishes. It's about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Are you ready today to meet your Lord and Savior and go to that marriage supper? I've been reading in the Bible where he said he'd come again as upon the Mount of Olives as they stood there watching him as his feet left the mountain everyone began to sigh from the very gates of heaven to angels standing by Oh, I can hear the shuffling of the issue Of every bearing for the supper of the land I can't even see old Gabriel He's just shining up that trumpet And soon you'll hear the sound throughout the land Then the gazing of the same Jesus Christ is going to come again he'll be coming for a church that will be ready he'll be catching up a people without sin oh I can hear the shuffling of the dishes of the preparing for the supper of the land Invitations some 2,000 years ago. Oh, when you hear the trumpet, you better be prepared to go. But there's oh so many still living in their sin. I know they won't be ready when my Jesus comes again. Oh, I can hear the shuffling of the dishes. Other preparing for Are you ready today if he would come this very minute? Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you passing the test that he, have, he has given you? I pray so today. I pray that you are right with your Lord and Savior. Passing the test. You know, there are, there are so many things out there that come our way. And in James 1.12 it says, Blessed is the man who preserves under trial. We've got to stay strong under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive a crown of life that God has promised those who love him. Do you love him today? 
I love him today more than ever. You know, when a person first comes to the Lord, there's such a love for Jesus in your life. And sometimes as we go on and as we live, that kind of grows cold. But he's coming soon and we need to refire for God. We need to have that love that we first had for him. You know, there's trials and temptations that come our way all the time. And when you become saved, tests will come. When you become a giver, test will come. When you tell of the love of God, test will come. I've been under some great tests and I know other ministers and other singers that are going through some great things right now that are not of God, but we're standing for God and that is why Satan is attacking he does not want us to reach this world that is lost and dying. He doesn't want us to reach the ones today that would be watching, that are lost, that are sitting there with no hope for a future. But there is a hope in Jesus. There is a hope like no other. That salvation that comes with giving your heart to the Lord and turning your life over to Him. There is none like it. There is no joy like it. You know, temptations... I was looking the word up in the dictionary and it says something which tempts, tempt to try to persuade someone to do something, especially something which will involve him into a sin or wrongful act. Isn't that something? That was in the dictionary. To involve him in sin or a wrongful act. You know, when we give our lives to Jesus, it's not easy. He didn't say it would be easy. And he said it would rain on the just and the unjust. But I believe today that Jesus calls warriors and not wimps. And he makes us warriors through the trials and temptations that we face. Our carnal nature is to look at self and what we want. You know, what I want. Not what God wants. You know, some people lust their covetousness. Um, anything that they want anymore. It seems like people are so used to the microwave error that they want everything immediately. But there's a time that we have to wait and we have to trust God and we have to wait on Him to do what we think He should, but maybe He doesn't want to do what we think He should. He knows best. So when things don't happen what you want, just listen to the Lord because He will show you the right way. You know, it says in um, Matthew six twenty five and 27, it says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life, is not life more important than food and the body more important than the clothes? Look to the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? We are more valuable because God made us in His image, and He said He would take care of us. You know, there's a lot of people that are called to the ministry, but they're waiting for things. They're not moving out. They're waiting for somebody something big to happen, for money to come in. But God said He would handle your needs. We need to step out in faith and do what He has called us to do. Why do we worry about these things? You know, you deal with the things in your life. Uh, we have to cast down those wrong thinkings and every imagination that comes against us because Satan is trying to keep us from going forth in the Lord. He's trying to keep you a sinner if you're sitting out there and have not decided to give your life to Jesus. He's doing his best to keep you away from what God has for you. The Lord has purposed, has a purpose for you. When you were birthed to your parents, God had a purpose for your life before you were ever born. He has things on hold just for you if you'll step out in Him and if you'll trust Him. Matthew 6.33 says, 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will, give it, will be given to you as well. Just think of that. If you seek God and His righteousness, put God first. Put Him first always in every situation. Put Him first. When you're, when you're going someplace, Lord, is, is this where I'm to be going? Am I supposed to be doing this or am I supposed to be doing that? Is it of you, Lord, or is it not? Ask God and live a righteous life. We don't have to. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own troubles. Think of that. We talk about kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? His word is law. If you are a part of that kingdom, you have to acknowledge that. John 3.30 says, He must be greater. I must become less. Before you can see, you must be born again. When we are born again, God opens our eyes to what's going on. He lets us see what is there, what, what is maybe in our future. Sometimes he'll give us a vision of what's coming, of what we are to do. And I thank God that he gave me a vision many years ago. You know, when I was 16, the Lord called me to the ministry, but I ran. And I made the wrong decision and things happened in my life. But after the death of two husbands, the Lord called me again, and I answered that call. And I am so thankful to him that he did not leave me nor forsake me, that he still wooed me and called me because he had a purpose for me, just the same as he has a purpose for you today. He has a purpose to fulfill in your life. And I'm telling you people, the time is short. We need to be about the Father's business. I was reading in Mark, um, it's Mark 4, 3 through 13, and it talks about the, the sower, about the farmer going out and planting seed. And uh, let me read that to you. This is, uh, this is Mark 4, starting at verse 3. Lesson, a farmer went out, to sow his seed. As he was scattering his seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not much, where it didn't hit the soil. It sprang up quickly, but the soil was shallow, and it died. When the sun came up, it just scorched it. Other seeds fell along the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear, bear grain. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, produced a crop, and it multiplied 30, 60, even 100 times. Then Jesus said, He who hears, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve, the twelve disciples, and others around him asked him about the parable. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables so that they may be, even, be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then, if you don't, he's saying, if you don't understand it, how will you understand any parable in the word? And it's a pretty easy parable. The seed is the word of God. We need to get that seed of God planted so far in our hearts and in our soul and in our spirit that we cannot leave God, that we stay there. The seed is him. The soil, the, the soil is our human heart. 
Where the hard ground was, that's a hard heart. Where the shallow heart was, it's a lack of consecration to God. Where the weedy is worldly ideas will choke the word of God out of your life and put in temptations. But good soil is an open heart to hear. Are you an open heart to hear today? Do you hear the word of God? Do you read the word of God? Do you get it into your spirit? Do you listen to what the Lord is saying to you today? He's telling you he loves you more than anything. He came to earth over 2,000 years ago. He came out of eternity into the present to go to that cross and die for you. He died for all your sins. So you don't have to die for your sins. All you have to do is come to Jesus Christ, to God through his son, Jesus, and ask him to forgive you of your sins and mean it in your heart. And he'll do a work in you like never before. You will see great things happen. But we need to have that, we need to be of that good soil that we ha open our hearts. You know, some people have a hard heart because people have hurt them in a church. People have hurt them in other places. And Satan wants that to come against you, to hold you back from what God has for you. You need to have that, that good soil. You need to have that open heart, that tender heart to receive Jesus today. In Galatians, it says, Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. A man's harvest in life is what he sows. Are you sowing good things today? Are you sowing things of the Lord? Are you sowing friendliness, godliness, being helpful to people? Are you helping others that are hurting? Are you reaching the lost today? Are you holding up a friend that's in need? Someone that has nobody, but you've come into their life and to help them? Are you holding them up? Are you reaching out with love of Jesus to give to your brother or sister in the Lord? Today is a, is a great day of loss in the United States. People are losing jobs left and right. There's no place to even, even get more uh, help with the government with finances after so long of unemployment. And people are living on dirt floors. They're living in, in tents. They're living just off the land. They have nothing. They've lost everything. You know, it says in the Word, as you give a, a person a glass of water, you're giving it unto the Lord. As you give someone food, you're giving it to the Lord. As you give someone clothes, you're giving it to the Lord. Let's help others out there today. Let's help the hurting. Let's be so giving and so generous in what God wants us to do to reach others, to be that good soil that's grown up with the Word of God in us. That we can be used in a mighty way. You know, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be evangelist. God has you in a place today, in a place of business. That he can use you in. Sometimes more than a pastor could ever reach someone. My youngest son has a chiropractic clinic and he leads people to the Lord in there all the time. He shows them the love of Jesus. He lessens to them. Do we lessen to people today? Do we really lessen? Do we take time? We are so busy. And sometimes we're so busy doing nothing. And all these things that we do, someday is not going to matter for nothing. It's what we do for the Lord that's going to matter. You know, when, when we pass away and when we go to heaven, 
The only thing we're going to take to heaven with us is the souls we have led to the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you today to get out there and win souls. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Find someone's hurting and help them. Pass that test with Jesus in a mighty way. Because we are passing tests in everything that we do. Everything that we do, we are passing tests. Three ways to sow the word is by preaching and speaking. That's one way. The second way is the way we live. Are you living a godly life? Can people see Jesus in you? Can people see Jesus in the way you're acting? In how you treat others? I went to Walmart one day, and I knew a lady that was a Christian up in front of me, and she didn't see me, and she didn't get something just right, and she was not acting in a godly way. And man, I prayed right then, Lord, never let me be like that. You know, sometimes you're the only Bible somebody's going to read. And if they see you living a godly life, if you're standing up for what's right, if you're being who and what God has called you to be and to be that oneness in Him, that it be God and not you, you have done a mighty work for God. I want more of the Lord and less of me. I don't want my carnal mind and my carnal body to get in the way of what God has. I want Him to use me. Don't you want that today? Don't you want God to use you in a mighty way in these last days? He will if you will let Him. But we have to be willing to let Him use us. Galatians 6 and 6 says, anyone who receives instructions in the word of God must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. We need to become a sower instead of a taker. You know, I ministered Sunday morning and I said, you know, we go to church and we wonder, you know, what's God got for us today? Or who's going to bless me today? We need to walk in the doors of the church saying, who can I bless? Who can I minister to today? Who can I help? But not only at church do we need to be doing that. We need to be doing it out on the highways and byways, in the places we work, in our businesses. And I know right now it's getting tough. Because they're telling us not to even have a cross on our desk in an office or a picture on the wall that has Jesus in it in our office. But you can still show them the love of God inside you. You can let them see the love of God. And God loves you so much. So much. There are people out there today thinking about suicide because they have lost everything. I plead with you today, go to Jesus. He is everything. You don't need what this world has. You need what God has. So call on Jesus today and ask him to forgive you and help you through this. Because it's Satan trying to take your life. Jesus wants to give you life. He wants to give you a fullness that you've never known. That you have never known. There is none like my Jesus. There is none like my Lord. Take no thought for tomorrow. Focus on today. Refuse to worry about things that have not happened yet. They say 98% of the things that you fear never come upon you. And I always talk about fears this way. I take the letters of a word a lot of times and I'll break them down. To me, fear 
is false evidence appearing real. It's a lie from Satan and he's trying to take you down. He's trying to pull you into the mully grubs when God can put you up on a higher plane than you've ever known. Like I said, Jesus loves you so much that he died on that cross. He took a whipping with the stripes. And they said back in that day that, that stripe of 39 lashes would kill most men. But it didn't kill Jesus. But those stripes he took on his back was for your and my healing today. Then he carried the cross. And they nailed him to that old cross. They made fun of him. They spit upon him. They gambled over his clothes. They pierced him in the side. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And they did it all for you and me. He did it all for you and me. That we could come to know him and be free in him to live for him, to pass the test that we have on this earth. We have to pass the test. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we live in a world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are, have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretentious, every pretension that set up itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captivity every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Take captivity today of all those wicked things in your life. Be an overcomer through Jesus Christ because He loves you today. He loves you more than you could ever possibly know. And He died for you. If you'd have been the only one on earth, He would have died just for you. So remember today, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you more than you could ever know. Come to him today, I ask you. Just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and turn away from those ways and know him as your personal Savior and then get into a good Bible-preaching church and live for the Lord. I bless you and I thank you for the time that you've let me spend with you today. And remember, we need to pass the test. We need to stand strong for God in this last day. God bless you. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Yes, he helps me down.